Fighting fast fashion with clothing libraries. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com with another look at some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. We've got that story about fighting fast fashion, plus music festivals clean up their acts. But first, California bill erases criminal cannabis records. What would it be a you know Good News Next Week episode without a little bit of cannabis news? From our buddy producer Sean, California is now one step closer to wiping away old cannabis convictions after lawmakers in the state voted on a bill that would retroactively erase charges that were issued between 1975 and 2016, and if it's a felony, you're only going to get dropped to a misdemeanor. But if you're a misdemeanor, it goes away entirely. Similar measures are being passed all over the country, even on the East Coast, in places like New York. And we've noted in many sort of different ways in the different areas that this story kind of plays out pick your overused media monarchy analogy that the CBD toothpaste is out of the tube. The lawmakers are already getting high on the big, huge tax revenue from cannabis. Pick your metaphor, but we know that it is moving that way. California considers erasing pot convictions. You know, I had to wait eight years for my marijuana misdemeanor to be expunged from my record in the horrible town of Frederick, Maryland. We can talk about that some other time. Our second story and our cover story this week on your Good News Next Week episode 68 I love because it's another story that's an idea. I My favorite good news stories for these episodes are really the ones about ideas, the ones that people can take and start doing on their own in their own community or city or town or whatever. It's not some sort of copywritten thing. It's not just some one-time event that happens again. It keeps growing and growing like some sort of crazy mind virus. And I think this reminds me of sort of the community fridges that we've talked about from the very beginning of Good News Next Week episodes, as well as something like the Tool Library back in Portland, Oregon. However, in a small shop along one of Sydney, Australia's busiest streets, Sarah Freeman is encouraging Australians to slow down and break their addiction to fast fashion. Shocked by the speed at which Australians buy and throw away cheap garments, and this article actually will further go into, of course, all the horrible things that that then unleashes in the atmosphere and the environment and in the water and the microbeads and all that gnarly stuff. Of course, that's not only in your foods and drugs and pharmas, but also in your clothing as well. Of course, everything we say and play always included down in the show notes. Shocked by the speed at which Australians buy and throw away cheap garments, she's also trying to harness an ancient concept, libraries, to persuade shoppers to rent instead of purchase clothes. A booming part of the industry, including in Australia, in, is so-called fast fashion, quickly turning catwalk designs into apparel sold at low budge or ultra-low prices and easily accessible via online sites. And of course, we know who ends up making those sorts of clothes. Sarah Freeman is convinced that if concepts like hers allowing shoppers to borrow and return quality secondhand clothes for a small monthly subscription fee take off, people power can make a difference. And of course, that works in every kind of story we're talking about. Hopefully, it'll catch on and people will start being more conscious and just make an effort to not go out and purchase the fast fashion items. I mean, and, and here's the phrase that pays, if we stop demanding it, then the retailers will stop supplying it. Australians putting the brakes on fast fashion, Australian eco-friendly clothes library, fighting fast fashion. Our third and final story here on Good News Next Week, meet the festival founder making a righteous move to ban single-use plastic. This coming from the bastards at NME. Festival season might be winding down in the UK right now, but on the other side of the globe, it's about to kick into high gear in the land down under. Australia's festival season is fast approaching, and with it comes a whole new year of festival-based weekend escape. The Lost Lands, an Aussie festival launched by Simon Daly, who also founded something called the Falls Festival, is pledging to be completely free of single use plastics by 2019, but they're looking to get 95% of the way there for this year of the festival. That means no plastic bags, no plastic water bottles either, backstage or sold by food vendors, no plastic straws or cutlery, and a heap of other pro-environmental moves. And then, of course, like most things, they take it way too far. The Lost Lands is addressing festival season's diversity problem, too, with the 2019 lineup 50% female and indigenous musicians, because quotas are awesome. However, 
I know about a festival that already does all of that stuff and more and has pretty much done it for almost a decade. In 2010, Pickathon in Oregon, it's always the first weekend in August, became the first music festival to eliminate all single-use cups and water bottles. In 2011, they became the first large American outdoor music festival to eliminate all single-use dishware and utensils. Those initiatives both contributed to the cleanliness and beauty and the enjoyment of the festival, but also drastically reduced the amount of garbage coming in and then leaving Pendarvis Farms, of course, for the landfill every year. Of course, if you know, you see those pictures after the like big Earth Day festivals or the clean up the environment protests, and it's of giant waste of destruction. So at Pickathon, you could buy a token for 10 bucks and bring it to any of the food vendors, which are all awesome local food vendors, in exchange for a plate and utensils with each order. When you're done, you take back your dirty dishes and you get another token to be able to use at the next meal. At the end of the weekend, redeem the token and you get your own takeaway dishware and utensils with you. Or... You can just keep the dishes with you and wash them yourself, like Cassie and I did for the three years we worked and camped there at the festival. Again, I enjoy some good anti-straw memes as well, but again, you don't need NGOs and weird programming and things to know that single-use plastic is a gigantic waste. And again, the more things you don't take into your place... You don't have to worry about what, what you got to get rid of. I say that many, many times. So we are shutting down the festival season and pretty much your summer with Good News Next Week, episode 68. And here at the end, we will deliver some deprogramming notes. We've got a brand new website coming soon. They actually, they actually sent me the preliminary preview look at it several hours ago today, but I haven't brought myself to be able to look at it just yet. But we do indeed have a brand new website coming soon. We are building our own website that will have our own chat, our own stream, and it's going to be for Media Monarchy members only. We would love to see you join the Media Monarchy community via patreon.com slash media monarchy. While we still use Patreon and it integrates great with Discord and it's a pretty awesome experience for Media Monarchy community members, but we need our own space. So instead of the Patreon, you can sign up via MediaMonarchy.com slash join as well. No, it doesn't have as many bells and whistles just yet, but that's where everything is going. Again, as I always like to remind you, I stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific Time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. And all of that is going to go behind the paywall when the new site is unveiled and it all works well. So the daily news show and the daily music show, as I've noted, will always be free as they always have been as the podcast later for nearly 13 plus years. But everything else is going to be members only. We hope to see you there in the new Media Monarchy future. I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Again, thanking you so much for watching and taking part and reminding you, as always, like Jella Biafra said, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.